The railway was crucial in World War II. Through with the veins and the arteries, really keeping the heart of Britain going, moving food for people, moving ammunition for the troops. And that's why it was important to cut passenger services and to explain it on posters, you're staying away from the railway so that we can help our boys over in France and Germany. When you think of railway factories, they were no longer just making trains and track. 32% of all the work going on in railway factories was dedicated to war work. A place like Derby, they were building tanks. These are British tanks destined for the battlefront in Russia. The idea when the war broke out, having looked at what happened in Europe already, was that by 1939, the Germans will be sending air raids over on the dot that we declare war. So the priority was to get those vulnerable children out of big centres like London, Liverpool. I was evacuated in 1939, age eight. It was called Operation Pied Piper. I had to go to my school, and from there I was taken to Euston Railway Station to catch a steam train. The whole station was packed with children saying goodbye to their mums and dads. I had a box with a gas mask in and a small case with a few clothes. I felt scared as I didn't know where I was going. Nobody knew where they were going. They laid on 3,800 trains, which in three days carried 1.3 million evacuees, which is an incredible feat. Second World War stations were huge focal points for not only people leaving, but people coming back. In that environment, you have a lot of emotion, you have hope, you have sadness, you have grief, and these stations became focal points for that. When Dunkirk happened, nobody knew how many troops were going to be coming home. How many trains do we need? You know, how, how much service do we need? How much space do we need on the network? And it became quite a famous event in war planning on the Southern Railway because it was always said that that whole operation was organised by a few phone calls. And in the end, there was over 330,000 troops that came back. A lot of train planning was learned there on how to best optimise routes and, and get from A to B quickest and most efficiently, really. I think that's a big lesson from the Second World War. After VE Day, demobilisation probably happened five weeks after. So it wasn't really then until the biggest amount of troops died coming back. And the railway played a massively important role in all of that. By the end of the war, the railways were in quite bad shape, really. Maintenance, it wasn't as frequent. So by the end of the war, you had 2,500 miles worth of maintenance that had not happened. There was a real need and a real push to kind of brighten them up after the war, to repair all the wagons, to paint the stations, and to try and bring the railway back up to 1939 standards.